I'm taking the sauce around, but you know, I'm getting man boobs. Yeah. So yeah. you could see here that not paying attention to the hormonal network means that you're setting yourself up to, fa to failure. You're shifting the entire range. So it's an entire network that you're actually pushing. So it actually takes a while. There's definitely a place for hormone balancing, especially as we get older, mm -hmm. um, andropause, menopause, mm -hmm. but the TRT craze is misguided because if you're just supplementing one hormone, mm. you are going to see downstream effects negatively on multiple other hormones yeah. as well. So. Hello everybody, this is Dr. Scott Scher. I am the Chief Operating Officer of Transcriptions and Health Optimization Medicine and Practice. I'm also a board certified internal medicine physician specializing in hyperbaric oxygen therapy. I'm Dr. Teda Chikoso. I'm the founder of Transcriptions and of Health Optimization Medicine and Practice Association. I'm a physician. I'm an undergraduate in biology and I'm also trained in pharmacology, medical informatics, interventional neuroradiology, artificial intelligence, socially responsible finance, and other things that are worthwhile understanding. <laughs> <laughs> he could go on for a long time, ladies and gentlemen, but I think he's bored of telling everybody exactly <laughs> what he does every single time. So today, Ted, I'd like to talk about testosterone. And before we started recording, you were talking about a patient that came into your office mm -hmm. that was asking for testosterone, and what did you tell him to do? Go to a urologist, you know, <laughs> to give me a prescription for testosterone. Yeah. And the reason for that is that I don't do testosterone replacement therapy, right? I yeah. do hormone balancing. So yeah. testosterone has open, been taken out of context in terms of uh, the way it's being treated. It's like, uh, it's very American now, yes. you know. Uh, TRT. You know, yes. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, <laughs> silver bullet type yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you know, you could see cholesterol. I always remind even other physicians of the uh, steroidogenesis pathway, right? Which starts from cholesterol and then uh, pregnenolone and, uh, you know, leading to cortisol and other, uh, all of these uh, other things that can be uh, measured right now very quickly, all of those levels. Yeah. Uh, so if you take a look at all these pathways, they're in a network. You know, if you raise testosterone, you're probably going to raise fucking estradiol as well. Yes, right? the uh, conversion. Uh, right. And uh, uh, raise uh, uh, testosterone. DHT, yeah. Um, and I have had patients who are actually women who are actually in jobs that are CEOs, you know, they're running these huge multi-million dollar companies. And they have already have very high testosterone. Right. So I don't know whether or not the you know, it's a chicken or the egg, but because of their high testosterone, they're, they're actually the able to yeah. running the company or it's the other way around. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. and, and their problems are actually, you see hair loss, right, because it converts to DHT, the hair starts falling, or they they have to get themselves waxed all the time because, you know, cultural demands that they, you not be hairy mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. all of those stuff. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, you know, you could see men with uh, gynecomastia, et cetera, because of, um, the conversion, estradiol, the yeah. conversion to estradiol. It's like I'm taking testosterone, but you know I'm getting man boobs. Yeah. So yeah. you could see here that not paying attention to the hormonal network, where uh, testosterone is ensconced, right, it means that you're setting yourself up to, pay, to failure. Right. And besides, testosterone is an anabolic hormone, right? Right. So you should put it in the context of all the other anabolic uh, hormones in the body, like growth hormone is anabolic, insulin, insulin is anabolic, yeah. etc. Yeah. And then versus the balance or after the balance between anabolic and catabolic processes, you take a look at the, the balance, right? What are catabolic? You have your cortisol, you have your thyroid, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, you're, you have melatonin. So you could see uh, those uh, types of uh, interactions going with them. Right. And as a network, they're like gang mates, right? <laughs> they will uh, they will help each other for example it's very well known like uh, that when you give growth hormone right mm -hmm. you're going to suppress cortisol yes right yeah uh, and that's why i'm so fucking annoyed that this is like why are you being given cortisol it's like the, the thing that we're taught in medicine is that you shouldn't be giving it. it's like holy fuck this is you know adrenals are actually yeah. you know uh seven to ten grams sitting on top of your kidneys yes. with no parasympathetic innervation yeah right and uh, they're the ones uh, producing your fucking cortisol and you think what you're not gonna assist the body in this uh, in, you know in, in yeah. uh, stress management so these are the kinds of things that uh basically gives you a second thought to just giving testosterone alone right, right? they're yeah. all linked together all linked together and then yeah. we're seeing this these trt clinics that have just popped up everywhere mm. i guess it's very american mm. like you said because what you take testosterone mm. you feel better you feel mm. stronger mm. you feel more lively you know mm. if you, you feel more manly right you feel more like and you know, also more is better and more right? is better yeah. that's the american yeah. way yeah. but then the challenge is that people are getting on trt when they're in their 30s now mm. um 
this is a reflection, though, of a number of different things, yeah. right? So if you take a step back and look at testosterone levels, they do start dropping around the age of 30, right? 30, yeah. yeah that's why uh, yeah. the youngest uh, uh, patients, male patients, that, or the youngest patients that you feel accept my clinic is 30. Right. And that's my base for that, is that your testosterone declines uh, beginning 30. But that doesn't mean you have to, to supplement right away. Exactly, right? yeah. yeah. Uh, so, one of the, so one of the other things that you would do in somebody that came in in 30... I, I would take a metabolomic test. Take yes. a look at their nutritional uh, metabolome, right? Yes. Their vitamins, minerals, cofactors, etc. Right. You know, uh, there's uh, even products out there with zinc and magnesium and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, really these are all in the metabolome. And if you correct those, uh, restore them to balance, you'll get a, a patient or a client who actually um, will have his uh, testosterone pop right back. But what uh, about the ice cream, Ted? Oh, <laughs> when, yeah, lifestyle, uh, lifestyle advice. Like uh, ice cream is known to depress uh, testosterone. You have one scoop, it will depress your testosterone for 24 hours, right? Right, right, yeah. So that's up to you. If you don't have a date the next day, then fine, right? <laughs> but but uh, remember that it, it's depression and, and, and uh, elevation uh, will also depress and elevate other hormones right. in your system. Right, 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 right. Yeah. right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, when you're giving, for example, in the classic TRT, you have to give the, the axis a rest. Oh, right? a rest, yeah, the sure. The HPA axis a rest. Yes, yeah. Um, this, is, oh, this is what you do, but this is not yeah. what most TRT places do, right? Yeah, no. So what you're talking about here is that if you take testosterone, yeah. your balls are going to shrink, right? Yeah. Because you no longer need yeah. to make your yeah. own. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. You're, the way you describe this is yeah. by giving the, the testosterone a break, right? Yeah. And using yeah. some of these other Yeah, like hormones. a low dose of GnRH, for right. example. Right, and that's the uh, hormone that comes from the hypothalamus that stimulates the, the pituitary to make your LH, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, and uh, you're touching in there now on LH and FSH, right? Right. So, uh, in the uh, testicles, right, uh, the effect of LH is uh, this, uh, the interstitial cells of Leydig, right? Mm -hmm. So, they produce testosterone. Mm -hmm. And then there's, you also measure. FSH, right? Mm -hmm. FSH would be the follicular stimulating hormone, and that would be for the sertralized cells, and that is for the production of sperm, right? right? So as, as we age, you know, uh, both of those uh, functions decline, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, as you get older, you have lesser seminal volume, longer orgasms, but lower, long, <laughs> you know, less seminal volume. But if you take a look, uh, in the, we're now uh, going into the phenomenon of andropause, you know, uh, mm -hmm. which is one of the things that uh, a diagnosis I introduced in Manila mm -hmm. when I started practicing mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. you know, almost two decades ago, um, is that the FSH and LH is coming in from the brain, right? right. And it's screaming for the testicles to produce testosterone right. and uh, right. and sperm, and it won't, right? So, so that so it screams louder, yes. right? Yeah. So when in true andropause, you'll see that the FSH and LH are really, really high, right. and then the testosterone is low, right? right? right. So uh, it's actually very easy to see that, coupled with the history, right? If you take a look at a patient who's 40, right? You know, usually comes to me already with some sort of antidepressant, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Is yeah. already an, an antidepressant, is irascible, the wife is there complaining about, you know, how, how angry and irritable he is, and so on and so forth. And if you take a look, this is the classic picture right. of, you know, a man actually going, undergoing, um, you know, an early andropause. Right, right, right. right. And uh, that's about, you know, where you get the midlife crisis, yeah. you know. And the Ferrari. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, 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 uh, yeah uh, actually, it has shown that, that uh, you know, no, that's, that, yeah, that, that uh, being around uh, beautiful women, for example, will raise their testosterone, right? And, and uh, uh, buying a car... Uh, that's reminiscent of their Playboy days, for example, uh, is surrounding themselves with the environment where they used to feel, ah, is it, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, used to sense, feel yeah. like uh, they had high testosterone. And then when you institute uh, hormone balancing, focusing on uh, testosterone therapy, um, what, what happens there is that you can take, you know, they, they begin to, after about three months, they begin to be back to their old selves, yeah. right? And they, uh, um, they actually can, you can talk to your psychiatrist and say, hey, we can take this off now, right? right? right, uh, right, right. They're not depressed anymore uh, and so on. And we're not paying attention to this because in females, menopause is very sudden, right? right? Uh, right. Of course, there's perimenopausal period now, but for many women, it just occurs suddenly and uh, the, the men just stop, right? Just a uh, very short uh, perimenopausal period, although some take five years or more. 
right? Um, but for men, it's very gradual. Right. People do not really uh, notice from HRDL. It's very gradual so that they think it's just like they're just really getting angry and more irascible over time, right? But uh, really, their uh, uh, testosterone, not only their testosterone, their other hormones yeah, also growth hormone goes yeah, down, yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah. uh, the main uh, hormone that's being pinpointed for midlife crisis is actually testosterone. Yeah. But people have to understand that it's within a network, right? So if you come to me and asking for TRT, I'll tell you to go to another doctor who will provide the script, right. right? Because I will have, for me, I will have to monitor all your other hormones that are, um, that are going at the same time, right. right? Right. Yeah. And at the same time, also making sure that you're optimizing them from a cellular perspective, yeah. as you described, right? Yeah. So vitamins, minerals, nutrients, gut health, yeah. lifestyle, behavior. So if they're not sleeping well, their testosterone is going down. If they're eating too much ice cream, mm. their testosterone is going down. If they're watching porn, which one is it? Go up or down? It goes up. It goes up. Temporarily. Okay. Tem and then, and then goes up. Okay. Yeah. And as if yeah. you ejaculate, it also goes down, yeah. right? So, yeah. Um, so anyway, there, there's all these lifestyle factors associated yeah. with... Yeah, and uh, people also have to be uh, uh, aware of, uh, you know, what testosterone they're getting, if they're getting on testosterone therapy. I don't usually uh, recommend pellets, but there are people who are comfortable with pellets. You know, it's like, uh, I tried um, the three-month injection, you know, and, you know, you take it the first time you take it, you want to fuck everything inside. It's like, and, and then the, 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 it's a, a steep drop-off yeah, after yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah. And it doesn't really last three months, right? right, right. So uh, for, for my patients, I actually was one of the pioneers of doing subcutaneous uh, testosterone yeah. uh, and uh, injections of testosterone. So uh, I have a cutoff, um, and this is, you know, it may be different for... for uh, people in practice, but I noticed that 55 and above, uh, I, I placed them on subcutaneous injections already. Before the time, they, you could is still um, actually um, use um, transdermal mm, uh, mm. types of testosterone. Mm. For, you know, uh, and for 28-year-olds, uh, 28 et cetera, you know, they can, they even respond to um, uh, clomiphene citrate, right. right? And all, and all the of drug that helps yeah, release yeah, more. Yeah. 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 So, so, uh, so for me, it's just like, uh, you know, you look at the bodybuilder lore, you know, I used yeah. to pour a lot into bodybuilding forums, et cetera, et cetera. And one, you used to work with a lot of those guys. Yes, and yes, them, yeah. yeah um, Some of their steroid, no, we won't talk about that. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, steroidogenesis pathway, right? Yeah. There are many, there are many uh, equivalents of testosterone that are yeah. more powerful than testosterone, but less androgenic yes. than uh, yeah. uh, testosterone, yes. right? We had a guy so, on our podcast, the Smarter and Harder podcast, talking about that very much. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, it's a very interesting subject matter because uh, very few physicians are uh, really interested in helping uh, these bodybuilders out, right? Um, I think the story that you heard is about this, uh, you know, uh, regional winner uh, and uh, now wants to get married and have kids and no doctor would touch him because, you know, he had no more balls. And uh, I said, you know, you know, our responsibility as physicians like, hey, you know, if I don't know this and other people are willing to help you, you know, let me study and let's see what we can do for you. Yeah. Right. I had to rebuild it. How did it, you it took me two years two to years, yeah. actually do that uh, combination of, uh, of various you know, basically restarting your hypothalamic vegetal gonadal axis, right? Right. Because he's young. I mean, he he's, he he was a champion at eighteen. Wow. Right. Yeah. So uh, you could see that uh, he came to me at twenty, wow. and uh, I had to work until uh, to reboot 22. his brain. Yeah. yeah. Reboot, reboot the hypothalamus. Reboot the hypothalamus, and yeah. also essentially, um, you know, there is just a lot of. Uh, like lore or misconceptions uh, in that, you know, and the conflicting science and so on. Mm -hmm. But for me, I tend to keep it simple for them. If we just follow the fundamental cell and where the biochemistry goes, you could generally figure out, you know, what you can and cannot give uh, the patient mm -hmm. or the client. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, um, uh, essentially measure doses of GnRH towards the later part, but first health optimizing him. First right? health optimizing, uh, yeah. optimizing him, the lifestyle, the everything else. Right. Uh, right, right. You know, yeah, because they suppress cortisol a lot, right? Yeah. So no, yeah, yeah. actually you need that for survival. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, yeah. it's kept at a very narrow range for the body. It's like it's demonized by by bodybuilders. No, no, no. I said let's let's bring that back in. Right, right. Uh, and so on. And of course, they're loath to do that, but you know, hey, he wanted to get married and have kids. So, right, right, you right. Know, yeah, uh, one of the things we always talk about as well when we're talking about hormone, op hormone optimization mm. is what ranges we're talking about here, right? Yeah. Because I think that's another big question. Uh, we, we get this a lot from patients. We often talk about how 
if you're measuring somebody's TSH, yeah. it's a TSH that's been an average of like somebody between five years old and 91 years old. Mm, yeah. And that's the entire range, that, not yeah. your normals in there. Yeah, yeah. What have you developed? And I mean, this is something you've kind yeah, of pioneered, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, you, you touched on that. And I was shocked to find out that the thyroid ranges were from age three to 94, yeah, right? Something crazy. And it's like, why is my normal supposed to be in that particular average, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, what I... Uh, look at in optimization means when in your life cycle are you in optimal health right and the thing that i chose in there is the the your gold your golden years for production is about 21 to 30 yes. right yeah so that's the, the that's essentially the age range where we try you to bring you back so in uh in paris uh we bring patients back to 25 years old plus minus two standard deviations where we're more gung ho there. In the United States, we're more scaredy cats. So we we uh, actually um, push you to you know, as long as you cross the thirty barrier, that would be fine. However, yeah. uh, the range of Terry Hertog is uh, you know um, twenty five plus minus mm -hmm. two standard deviations. Mm -hmm. uh, the range of um, uh, Mark Gordon. Right. Yeah. Uh, Mark Gordon. Yeah. Uh, Mark Gordon. Uh, uh, I think he goes no, by younger. I think. He, he goes by the median values. Medi sorry, median, median, yeah, values yeah, median values. Yeah. Right. And then I go by uh, your percentile. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, between fifty and fiftieth and seventy fifth percentile for between twenty one and thirty. Right. Which right. is a little bit more acceptable as a range, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Because uh, the others have extremely high testosterone, others are low, but then if you go 50 to 75%, right. you know, you're, you're uh, good to go in sure. that. Yeah. But yeah. putting patients back in that range, you know, doesn't necessarily mean that it's only testosterone going to put it exactly. back. Exactly, yes. Right? yes. So yeah. even for your metabolites, right, you bring them back to that level of between 21 and 30. And that's what most people don't understand right. about the practice is that you're shifting the entire range. So it's an entire network that you're actually pushing. So it actually takes a while. It takes time. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the key, right? Is you don't want to be normal for 63 years old. You want to be optimized for when you were the most optimized in your life cycle, which is between 21 and 30 years. Of age, yeah. Right? When you so. had sexual activity several times a day. <laughs> Fornication, fighting, <laughs> surviving, fitness function, right? Yeah, fitness that's function. When we're, and that's when we're 21 to 30. So, yeah, yeah the fitness function is something that's a Donald Hoffman thing, right? So, yeah, 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 the four great Fs of men. Right? <laughs> One of the four great Fs of men. Feeding, fighting, fleeing, and fornication. Ah, yes. Yeah. Those are... Those are them right there. So. Yeah. Yeah, so I think when it comes to hormone balancing and TRT, mm. There be, there's definitely a place for hormone balancing, especially mm. as we get older. Mm -hmm. um, andropause, menopause, mm -hmm. but the TRT craze is misguided because if you're just supplementing one hormone, mm. you are going to see downstream effects negatively on multiple other hormones yeah. as well. So, Yeah, uh, the key concept here is network, right? Once you touch one node in a network, the rest of the network moves. So you better make sure that the movement of the uh, major nodes in the network are actually also taken care of. Look, Microsoft cannot move you know, in, in the AI world, Microsoft uh, cannot move without knowing what AI is doing, without knowing Google is doing, mm -hmm. what uh, Apple is doing. Mm -hmm. So all of those, you're monitoring all at the same time, you know, uh, uh, especially if you're, for example, picking stocks. Why? Why? It's, it's, it's the same, the same principle yeah. for your hormones. So. Yeah. Yeah. So for those listening, please don't take this as medical advice. Make sure you find a clinician to help you. But just be aware that TRT itself may not be the best way to go for many people, but not all. Talk to your doctor and figure it out.